Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you on the Tuesday. Another Brexit bonanza week of bullshit and bananas. Waiting to see if we get this vote. Um, waiting to see what amendments are added to this bill. Trading headlines uh, as usual. Um, but before we get into the charts, I want to uh, bring uh, bring this in here. This is the uh, front page of the market section of, of uh, Wall Street Journal. Kind of sums up what's going on right now. This year's hottest trade by everything. So if you look at the distribution of returns of basically everything, um, everything's higher this year. Uh, and this is like one of these anomaly moments where the market's just lost its mind, basically. Uh, and whether it's QE or whether it's uh, weak hands continually getting caught short, uh, it doesn't matter what is driving this. Uh, but we're in one of these unique situations where despite, you know, I would say terrible news everywhere, I believe so far earnings this year are the lowest they've been um, since 16 I was reading um, so earnings are coming out pretty sucky obviously the China deal is not close to done obviously there's conflict all over the world and we have economic policies that don't make any sense we have bond yields which are inverted as in negative um, and yet here we are today on like a really classy risk on day where it's happy happy joy joy and we're not going to fight this we just want to point it out um, price will tell us when to turn um, but I just thought that headline this morning as I was reading through the news sort of summed it up this year's hottest trade buy everything. Buy, Mortimer, buy. Um, I'll segue that little, uh, that little sermon into the gold chart here. Uh, as we talked about just a second ago, risk on today. Um, all the risk metrics are pointing to a risk on day. Japan was on holiday, so it's pretty quiet. They're like inducting a new emperor today. Some fancy ceremony. It's kind of, I don't know, you know, as much as I'm against sort of like all these royalty things, somehow the Japanese emperor, I don't mind. Uh, a thousand years of that. Bunch of Buddhists with good hearts uh, putting it all together. Um, if you get a chance, have a look at what's going on in Japan. You want to see some people who do ceremony uh, the right way. Check out the Japanese today. Anyway, back to the gold chart here. Um, we've been in this sort of pennant formation now for quite some time. Today it looks like it's going to break. This is the, um, I believe we're GC, GCZ right now gold futures um, we're just going to be punching some out through the lows yesterday's low um, was 84 and today's low also is 84 so it kind of gives us a platform 84 8 yesterday 84 today um, but course short right now we just put a social amount out and we'll be adding uh, when this gets when this confirms on the price side, just to join this risk on party, gold is going to be our horse. Um, so short gold today looks okay. Let's take a look at euro. Some people are saying this is going to be a turn bar. It's marginally uh, bearish just because it's got a, a red body. But... I would say it's quite inconclusive. We made a new high, made a higher high, higher low, basically closed kind of in the middle. Very inconclusive candle. I am on the buy side of Euro, as you all know. Um, the 
this is that weekly trend line so on the dailies it comes in at 30 this will be the death knock um, but I think you need a wider berth going into the ECB because there is a chance we do get a pretty decent sell-off just to screw the the fresh shiny new longs in euro um, especially guys who may have put it on yesterday it's not really the best level to be long euro 111.78 so we'll be lurking between 111.30 and 110.50 today trying to find a good place to get long euro dollar cable you know what the fuck I have no idea I mean what's coming to my mind in cable and I don't have a dog in this fight I'm just watching is that even if they do pass this Brexit deal and, and the whole thing is over, we still have years now of trade negotiation, years now of uncertainty about tariffs and about trade and about goods um, that are going to negatively affect the British economy, I would say, more than the European economy. Um, so how high can this go uh, after the deal is done? not clear to me but I certainly um, will be thinking about putting on some shorts now I'm going to be watching price through 134 so you know this doesn't really help today but this week it gives you a framework right I mean if your target is 133 134 which I think is the market's target I can also say with a straight face that I'm beginning to you know if I think further down the line I'm beginning to say Jesus you know what are they going to do? It, it, you know, it took Canada nine years to negotiate their trade deal with Europe. It could take UK a hundred years. Um, you get the metaphor. So, I don't know. Watch your news feeds. I think pre-Brexit, you can pick this stuff up between 128 and 125, uh, which again, probably doesn't help a lot of you. Uh, and then I think post-Brexit, you can sell this above 135. Anyway, fuck Gable. We're not, uh, we're not playing in that shit today. Take a look at Dollar Swiss, bearish. Uh, this is part of the whole bearish dollar theme. Um, selling rallies in this makes sense. Somewhere between 99, figure 20 is probably the safe point. Dollar yen is being pulled in two directions now. We have the risk on direction and then we have the dollar uh, sell direction. Not much to do in dollar yen. It gets interesting above 109.05 or 109.30. Um, and until we see that, you can be short. I wouldn't say it's a five star short until we see risk metrics turn. Euro yen bid. Sterling yen, avoid, dollar czar, leaving it. It's many, many problems in South Africa. But this dollar bearish sentiment is pervasive. So it's uh, sort of equal and opposite forces. No real clarity or direction there. Um, Aussie's bullish, right? We're, gonna, we're eventually going to attack this um, 68 to figure. Uh, word to the wise, once we get there, this isn't really a pure break trade because it's a trap here. You, can have, you have serious resistance between figure 10. So certainly it's at best second time through. Um, at worst, it's just a place to take profit on your longs, I would say. And if you're a long-term CTA and you have a great average, Okay, yes, you're obligated to buy through this. And yes, possibly we could see this craziness continue up to 71 cents. Um, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense uh, to me. And certainly first time up, be careful. Um, there will be resistance first time up. And if you get a print and we're massively risk on and the trade deal is done, then you can buy. If none of that is happening... Uh, be careful. Let's go to CAD, our buddy Trudeau. Um, I don't know him at all, but uh, he got reelected. Less of a... Uh, 
he's losing his support in leg in in legislation in leg from the legislators. So less of a majority. Thank you. Um, Dollar Cat is a sell. Not much to do at one thirty eighty six. Um, so just be patient. I mean, uh, I don't know what retail sales today in, in, in Canada. If that comes in weak, you can fade that. But typically what happens when we're in these awkward places in a chart where nobody is short anymore and they all should be, uh, retail sales will come in strong today and then we'll, we'll smack the pony down through 130.50. Um, but this is not a place to open shorts. Uh, I repeat, even though it is bearish and we are going down, the timing is not right. Timing is like a big part of trading. If you're not short from 132, don't try and get on this horse at 130.86. And then finally, our old friend ES, who is squeezing the living Christ out of basically all of the retail account holders in the world. If you look at the uh, sentiment indicators from IG and from Dukas and from all of these uh, MCM or whatever CMC all these all these little retail platforms this and the German stocks are the are the most hated and the most shorted instruments until retail uh, gives up on this this is just gonna eventually get them and now we're so close to these highs these all-time highs we'll call them 3030 uh, pretty much has to trade so we are obviously bearish, watching right now, um, waiting for price to confirm a turn. We don't have to be first. We don't even have to be in the first 5%. We just have to be short when it's going down. And I'll just repeat to everyone, I seem to be in sermon mode today. The point of trading is to be short when something's going down or long when it's going up or square. Being short right now while it's going up doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So wait for price to confirm the story. Price right now is not confirming, so just leave it. There's plenty of other shit to do. Let's sell some gold today, or let's work on some euro longs today. Got loads of other crap we can do. Anyway, I've said enough. I'm in babble mode. Good luck today, people. Make some dough. You deserve it. Talk to you tomorrow.